Hello everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create. We're having a beautiful day in San Diego. I just got done messing around in the garden, so I feel very perky. It's a beautiful day. So what you see in front of you is page four and page five. They are going to be mirror images of each other. And um, yes, yeah, so let's get started. So I'm going to set aside. I just wanted you guys to see kind of where we're headed. I've uh, often referred to start with the end in mind. It helps you stay on track, right? Okay, so here we go. I'm going to start revealing this layer at a time. So this is from the 8x8 collection. Uh, okay, I have a confession to make. I opened all my packages and mixed up all my papers. Um, I am using both um, collection packs and backgrounds. And honestly, I'm not sure which this one is. Usually if there's a large element on the page, it's an indicator like this one that it is from the collection pack. Um, and the background packs tend to look a little bit more like this. This is somewhere in between, so I'm not sure. Let me see. I've cut through some of my um, backgrounds, so let's see what the back side looks like. It's this one and it is from the background. So this is from the background pack um, of the 8x8. The tough part is at some point I'm going to cut through this and then I won't have my, my reference anymore. Um, and what happens is I open all my packs and then I sort them. Um, there, there's duplicate patterns in the background and in the pack. And what I like to do is to put all of the, the matches together so I know which prints I have two of. And that's why it all gets kind of scrambled. But also the other indi um, cheat is if you have two of one pattern, that means one came from background and one came from uh, the patterns pack. Okay, enough about that. The Secrets to Unlocking Stamperia. <laughs> so again, this is from the background. I need to trim it down just a little bit. Sorry, I'm not very organized. I felt very organized outside. I came inside and now I'm discombobulated. Okay, it wasn't quite uh, trimmed down to the page size. Okay. <clears throat> oh, and I've talked about this before, but it's been a long time. People say, why don't you make your pocket page 8 and 1 8 by 8 and 1 8 instead of 8 by 8 so you don't have to trim everything down. And um, the reason that I don't is because some collection packs, um, even though the paper says 8 by 8, it's really not quite 8 by 8. So I wind up having to um, accommodate that. Stampery is pretty good. Their 8x8s are truly 8x8. Graphic 45, their 8x8s are not always 8x8. They're usually a little bit smaller. And that's, um, and I started out um, before I even knew Stampery existed, that Graphic 45 was kind of my, uh, my go to. Okay, so that is going to be our base. We're not going to put it down just yet. Now we're going to pull in these flaps and they're going to go down. I'm going to set aside all the papers. So one flap. Super simple. It is four it's a smidge under four and a half and the reason why it needs to be a little bit smaller is because I want there to be a slight gap uh, between the two pages. So it is uh, start with four and a half and take a tiny slice off about a sixteenth of an inch. So what that would be is four and seven sixteenths. Four and seven sixteenths or just under four and a half. So that's gonna go over here on the, oh gosh, I don't have tape or anything. Wow, I really am not ready for y'all. Let's get that down. Uh, it's gonna go on this, page is going to go on the left side and on page five it's going to go on the right side. So all the cut list for this page just do it twice and you'll have it for four and five. <clears throat> okay. 
This is what I call a tape tear tool. We sell them in our shop. I can't live without it. I started by improvising um, a device, uh, a four by four uh, square from the fabric part, fabric area of Joanne's. And, um, but it was very busy. It had lots of markings that I wasn't using. So then I created one and then added this little handle, which is what keeps it from getting lost and underneath things. There's a couple of tools I can't live without. I can't live without that because I can't get my hands in and out of scissors um, because of my arthritis. So I, I tend to only want to pick up my scissors if I'm really fussy cutting and doing something significant. And this is another tool. It's a weeding tool from my cut machine. Um, and I use it all the time. And then the last thing is either one of these or both. Um, this is a paint palette and I use it to lift mistakes. And this, I, um, I got, I, I took this from a friend of mine. It is, I think it's a creative memories tool, but I'm not positive. Anyways, I use it when I forget to put my magnet in. I used to use this, but you stick it in, the magnet sticks to the metal and comes back out. If you push it in with something flat and plastic, it doesn't follow it back out. So I've used this quite a bit too. For those of you that have hung out with me for a while, you know I make mistakes. Okay, so these this will be the um, outside cover. No, yes. And this is the inside. And then there's our base. And I'm not putting these down yet because I think I'm going to put a magnet here. Now we're going to do our... Carefully removing my papers so they're in the order that I need to put them down. Okay, so this is going to be the right hand flap. And this is a doubled over flap, and I've already added the magnet, so I wouldn't make the mistake I just talked about. So this is eight and three eighths, eight and three eighths by eight. You're gonna score. If I'm gonna. I rotated around. I scored at half inch and four and a half. So if you put it in your in your scoreboard this way, half inch and four and a half, and then it's going to get installed like this. And this just helps when you go to pick up the back that the tape doesn't follow it, pressing it into place. Some days I have a harder time with that than others. And then also another trick is when you go to pick up the backing, don't try to get it from the back edge. Try to pick it up from the side. And because the tape is down here and here, when you go to pick it up by the side, it's less likely to pick up the tape. When you try to pick it up at the end, it's very likely that you're going to pick up both tape and backing. Some of the, I'm sure most of you have already figured that out, that use tape. But for those of you that are glue people, that's kind of a little odd trick to keep you from getting aggravated by picking up your tape. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay, I'm just looking to see my edges look like they match up pretty good. Okay, I had to think about where my magnets were going. So we're going to go ahead and start decorating on this side. So we've already got this magnet holding it closed. This is where the spine is. And this is the reason why I wanted it to be off just a smidge, is I don't want this corner to interfere with the, um, the spine because it's loose. 
this corner won't because it's fixed to the page, but this is loose from the page, so there's a chance it could get caught up in the spine. That's why I made it just a tiny bit smaller. Okay, this is the cover. And I'm going to put this in here right now so I can see the edge because it's black on black. There's a chance I might need to trim this just a little bit more. And I think it is. Oh, and I also have an ink there. Good heavens. You guys are going to have to watch me do all the boring stuff today. Tape, glue, ink. <clears throat> so no magnet is going on the cover. <clears throat> Excuse me. Go. <clears throat> this is going to be the inside. So when you open it, you've got this sort of match, which is kind of nice. <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> This would be um, this would be a fun album for like a trip to the space museum here in San Diego. It's uh, it's pretty cool. They have a theater, and when you go in, the the chairs kind of lean back, and you look at the dome, and it's all the the light, the stars, and all the celestial. Um, bodies and it's pretty neat um, but it would be this would be a great album for that let's go ahead and put this side in well I'm really off I didn't it's too tall I thought I had trimmed everything last night <clears throat> <coughs> pardon me I think uh, allergies are getting me being out this morning <clears throat> <clears throat> So if you're interested, I use a paper trimmer called Roto Trim. For years, I used Caterpillar, and I just changed to Roto Trim. They both have their um, strengths. Um, I really like this one. It cuts really nice right angles, but when you get down to something less than an inch wide, uh, it's a really uh, difficult to manage it inside the trimmer, where um, Caterpillar, that's kind of one of its strengths, is you can trim... There's nothing holding the paper down except your hand. You can trim all the way up to, you know, a quarter of an inch if you can hold the paper. This one has a, a bar that holds the paper in place. So once you get inside that inch, you either have to tape it to another piece of, you have to tape it to another piece of paper. Okay. Looks like you're ready finally. Uh, eight by eight. I forgot to mention that. And I would, I think this is eight by eight backgrounds. Okay. Okay, so these two go here. And this goes here. Okay, now I'm, I'm just kind of putting it together real quick because I have to think about where the magnets are going to go. Now these two are four and a half 
four and a half by three and a half. You need two of them. It's going to be glued like this. I don't have the back side yet. So these are going to be attached. It's going to close. And this is going to close on top. So the magnets are going to be, ooh, I should have put them on this side. I guess I thought it was the other way around. So this, these will be like this. So I need uh, magnets here and here. Ideally, they would have been here. Why, why did I think it was going to go the other way? Because I want to be able to pull this like that. Yeah, okay. I did that wrong. So if you were watching ahead, don't glue this down. Magnets need to go there and here. And I glued these down last night because I was afraid I was going to misplace them and cut through them. So I'm just going to put the magnet on the back side, which is fine. Um, you can put a photo here. It'll be like a three by three. But you can definitely put a photo on the back side. Okay, so this goes like this. It's a continuous pattern. So we're going to have a magnet here and here. I need to do that right this second so let's hold off let's go ahead and glue this piece down make sure it's cut right looks good I'm gonna ink it and we'll lay this down this is from the 12 by 12 collection pack Is that right? I'm pretty sure tags only come in collection packs. Yeah, that's how I know there's tags on the back side. And I used uh, that's kind of twirled. Okay, now on these, I put a little tick mark, it's right there, and it's at one inch. So I came in from this corner to one inch, that's where I'm going to attach it, here. I'm thinking I can go ahead and put this down. Now I haven't completely. Oh, yes, I did. I did. Never mind. I was going to say I haven't done the cards for page five, but I already have. So there's supposed to be a magnet on this side. If you guys catch it. And this is from the background. It's from the backgrounds. The 12 by 12 background. Okay, so now these can close. So this is going right there. And this is going right here. And as you can see, it's part of a continuous circle. I'm just going to evenly distribute them. And then I want this edge 
to fall at the one inch mark right there. I'm looking at my little tiny pencil mark. So that looks right. I'm going to straighten this up so. Okay, and there, I just want to make sure that the edge of this is clear of this. So I'm going to get my template ruler or any clear ruler where you can um, you know, verify that you've got a straight line. hate this ruler because on one side the paper will go under it and I always forget which side I want to use. Hate is a strong word, sorry. Okay, so I'm lining up the half inch mark. So it turns out that um, I want the edge of this to be a half inch away from the score line. And that winds up being just right on the one inch mark. So that's almost like I planned it. Okay, I'm gonna spread these out just a little bit more. Not much. Now everything looks good. I'm going to put some weight on it so it doesn't shift on me. I'm trying to find something heavy. And then I'm going to put glue here and press it into place. Now I already have my pencil mark, so it's going to go down pretty easy. If I could stop touching it. Oops. Start over. I lost my line, sorry. Black on black, really tough. There we go. Okay, so the idea behind all that uh, is that what's exposed here is a three by three and a half by three and a half. And then when you open it, you're going to see um, three and a half by four and a half, a full photo mat. <clears throat> there we go. See? So it has a nice frame around it here. You open it up and it has a nice frame around it here. That's the idea. Okay, now if I had done this right, I would put a magnet here <laughs> and here so that there'd be the, lim the minimum number of uh, pieces of paper between the magnets, but I didn't. So I'm going to put my magnet on the inside. here, right about there, and here. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, close that. And now I can locate the other two magnets.
And then you can see there's just a little gap in between. Okay. I don't really need to put tape on them. I just need to glue this down and they'll stay where they belong. Did I ink it? Yes. All right. <clears throat> okay. So when we're all done, we'll have two of these side by side. This will be one video. I love this look and, and this look. So we still need to cover these. <clears throat> I don't know if, what I want to do. I don't know if I want to put a solid paper there or um, cut one of these down. Let's see, I still have, see I want it to be um, lighter so that it sort of um, emphasizes the the effort we went through to, to frame it, right? So maybe this, yeah. This is from the co collectors, what do they call it? Uh, I think it's called the collector pack. Collectibles. There it is. It's from the collectibles. Lots of stuff to cut apart. And then if you don't use the cut apart, it's usually the flip side. You know, I like that too. Which sort of pulls that pattern back in. Uh, the flip side is usually a pattern. So it's this. Option. I kind of like this one in particular because the blue is over here on the light and then the light, it's reversed. <clears throat> Maybe not. I already used that pattern somewhere. What do you guys think? You know, ends up cutting off the deer's ear. The deer, the deer's ear. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. What? what do I have here? Why do I have these two extra? Something I didn't cover. Oh, that. <laughs> the inside. Okay, this goes here. And this goes on this side. Okay, so between page, and I gotta look at page five because I wanna make sure I've got these sorted right. And when it's in the book, it's gonna look like this. These are gonna be side by side. So I cut a strip <clears throat> that matches. this so these are backwards this goes like this sorry i had it right side up that was confusing me yeah so when you open these two you have this full circle Pretty sure this is from the eight by eight. Yes, it is. I just saw there's a large. This is the eight by eight. So, um, so I measured, you know, from here to here, and that's also the other reason why I wanted this a smidge smaller. And then 
measured this side to this side, had two tick marks. This is what came out of the middle. <clears throat> so it's going to go on the spine. When you open these two out, you get this full picture that's sort of hidden when it's in the closed state. So the reason I pulled page five in is I wanted to make sure. Yeah, this does go with four and this does go with five. I wanted to make sure I had the right ones lined up. Okay, let's dry fit and then get this glued down before I mix them up again. This is from the 12 by 12. That pattern is from the 12 by 12. This is from the 8 by 8. I think it's cool that this that they're opposed. That was just by happenstance. Okay, now the last thing is to cover these two, and what did you decide on? Now I know this is three and a half, but I'm just going to go ahead and mark it. So what I should be trimming it down to is three and three eighths. We'll see if, if it's right. I got that correct. Yes, I did. So I just take this width, take one eighth off, center it, and then it's a sixteenth inch border. <clears throat> Pardon me. After a while, you can almost eyeball it. Beautiful. That's not right. There we go. I kind of just want to make it continuous. There we go. So the pattern flows. <clears throat> Just about. <clears throat> hmm. 
Okay, now we're going to repeat the process for page five. I like it. What do you guys think? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So when when you first open it, uh, when you open this, you'll see a matching circle. And then also when you open this side, the other half of this circle is going to be over on page five. So it takes a little bit of paper planning, um, but it's worth it. And here's the other two. They're going to go like this. And that's kind of why I glued them down is because I didn't want to mess up the order. So this, when this is laying like this, these two will be over here and this flap will be open. So you'll see this whole circle, which I think is kind of cool. So it takes a little bit of planning. Um, I think I'm pretty sure. Let me look at my paper. <clears throat> this is from the 12 by 12 backgrounds pack. Uh, that's where I got this circle. So I think it looks pretty cool. Now, if you um, are going to try to replicate this, pull, pull aside that paper. So I'm building out of order. This is actually build two. Build one was the cover. Um, and because I wanted to do these extenuating cir circles, um, you're going to need to set aside those pages early on so you don't accidentally cut through them. And then also, once you um, establish the design, if you don't glue these down, I had done a lot of my pre-planning days ago, so a lot of times I'll glue things down because I come back to it and I'm like, I don't know what I was thinking here, and it'll go into the scrap pile and get repurposed. Um, but ideally, your magnet will be on this side. And... On this side and then also let me scoot over page four put your magnets on this side and this side and then there's less layers and then even if you put photos here here you still have a pretty good connection this way with a magnet on top you've already got to go through two layers and two layers on this side so you can it, it'll still work um, but you'll be much happier with the results if you catch yourself ahead of time put the magnets there and, and there and that was part of the reason I put the magnets on here early was so I wouldn't forget and then I completely forgot about this side so yeah so in, in the case of this there's a magnet here and here they are as close together as they can be and chances are you're going to do three by threes here so the magnet's centered so even the photos won't lay on top of it so there you go. That's page four. I've got to go walk my doggy. You can hear her in the background. And then when we come back, we will finish building page five. And I'll just do a quick flip through before we move on. And again, here's that strip that's going to go. And I can actually show you this just like that. This will open. And it'll be just like that. So that'll be the finished page four or five. Now I had originally planned something different for page four and five and so I've already got a strip glued into the book but I'm going to lay this right on top and we'll get that awesome sort of wow when you open those two flaps. Okay I'll be back soon. Hey everyone it's Daphne and I'm back. Got my walk in with Nala and we're going to start working on page five and as um you remember, it's going to be a mirror image of page four. So when we're finished, it's going to look like this, but a mirror. So let's get started. So I've got tape on here this time, and I remember to put my magnets on the inside, although for the adjoining side, it's going to have to be reversed. So at least it's half better than, than uh, page four. Again, if you don't decorate these until you install them, then you can add your magnets. Because these are being attached to a flap, you can't pre-do it. You have to do it after they're added because it may shift around a bit. Okay, so we're going to start with the left-hand flap, which is 8 and 3 eighths, 8, 
eight and three eighths by eight inches. You're going to score it half inch and I believe four, half inch and four inch, half inch, four inch. And you know what? I think I said half inch, four and a half inch. Oh, that's right. Half inch, four and a half inch. Half inch, four and a half. And this is just going to get installed flush to the left hand side of page five. There we go. Okay, now there's just a simple flap on the right hand side. There we go. So this is the um, the folded flap, and this is the straight flap. Okay, so we can. Uh, Install this. It's dry fit. Looks good. And I have it inked. So let's go ahead and put that down. I believe this goes here. I'm going to double check because I've got two of them on and see which one fits best. Well, this one needs to be trimmed shorter. That looks good. Need to add a little bit of ink. As you can see, I, I just like to add a little tiny bit to um, knock the white core edge off. Some people like to distress pretty far into their paper. I think that looks good too. But the white core is especially um, visible against a black, uh, against the black cardstock. I don't want your eye to be drawn to the line. I want it to be drawn to the pattern. So I just Knock it off with a little bit of ink. Oh shoot, I forgot. I was, I was actually lining it up to the wrong line. There we go. Um, the top folds over and there's a little gap between the two and I was lining it up to the outside edge. <clears throat> and again, I had mentioned this before, but I did that so that there's um, less likelihood of this corner getting caught up in, in the um, spine. Okay, and then this is our lovely second half of the circle. Make sure it's right side up and it's going to go right here. cool collection. It's an older, well not old, but it's been around for a little bit. can't remember if we've already done something with it or not. Um, I know I did something with the original Cosmos, which was a long time ago, but this is a new set, Cosmos Infinity. There we go. That's going to be so cool. Okay, i got to think about, I'm going to reference back to this one. This is the pattern I want. 
and this is right side up. Okay, so I'm going to dry fit that real quick. And it looks like I need to maybe trim it. No, no, I don't. It's ready. So I try to do it so when you're opening things up, you still see the <coughs> coordination of patterns. <coughs> it doesn't always work out so well, but in this particular page, it's going along swimmingly. Okay, this is a little bit too big. I need to trim that down. I think it's the full eight inches. Yeah, I hadn't trimmed it. That should do it. Let's take a look. I could go a little more. Okay. Remember, if you're using your powder puff, push away from the corner so that it, the, the corner, the tip of the corner, doesn't grab your sponge and create these little divots. I try to remember, but. Um, I can forget occasionally, and it tears up the sponge. It's not hard like most um, ink pads, and I like that because then I don't need a sponge applicator. It's actually built in, but then the downside is you can damage the sponge if you're not thinking about what you're doing. To me, it's just one less tool on my desktop, and I like it. All right, don't start. We just got back. Okay, all right. Why does it get this? That's weird, didn't want to stick. Yeah, did oh, I know why, shoot. Gotta lift it real quick. Faster, faster. We're drying. I forgot. I have extra magnets on there. <laughs> so what we need to do is put this in and then add our two flaps and then finalize the position of the magnets. Dummy. Okay. So. Just a minute, sweetheart. I'm going to have to pause and see what she wants. I'll be right back, guys. Okay, I finished up. I thought I hit record, but I didn't. But I want to go back over kind of what I did here. So on this side, let me say this side. What I mean is, oh, looks like I um, need to put some glue under there. It's, uh, I put a cardstock backing and I forgot to glue it. Anyway, these two are on the single flaps, and then these two are on that. Um, accordion flap. Now because it's on the accordion flap you need to be sure when you're putting it down that it's not going to interfere with these extensions so it has to go flush with that fold. And hopefully that makes sense. If it's sticking out over it's going to immediately hit it and not want to lay flat like so. You'll still be able to open it you'll just have to open it like this. You won't be able to open this and then pull. You'll just have to open it like a regular page. So keep that in mind. This overlaps on the single flap. It can go over because I'm not unfolding anything. This has to be flush with the score line. That's what I've decided to do. And then the other thing I did, hopefully I still have, yeah, I do, they're right here. I created these three and a quarter by three and a quarter 
photo mats just to kind of show you what a photograph, what I, where I would place a photograph, for example. So I would do photos here and here, and then you could do two photos here or one three by five photo, something like that. So just to give you an idea of what um, what that could look like and why I didn't want to go crazy on embellishments because we haven't placed any photos yet. and You don't want to have to peel embellishments up or cover them up um, because you didn't plan for photo space. Now, the other thing is you can embellish the the tops of these as much as you want and then just keep in mind the B side is where you want to put all your photos. So that's another way to look at it too. So that's page four or five. So this was build two. So build one was the cover. This is build two. I'm probably going to jump back to page one and that will be build three. But we'll when I come back, I'll be sure to point out what I'm working on. Thanks and I'll be back soon.